spoke a word You were singing over me You have been so, so good to me Before I took a breath You breathed your life in me You have been so, so kind Till I'm found, leaves the 99. I could 
treasure you found Everybody, here we go. It is time to uh, have worship this morning. Uh, welcome. I hope all of you are uh, enjoying. I know the seats are a little more comfortable laying back in your uh, couch or your lazy chair. It's much more comfortable than the wooden pews, that's for sure. Uh, so welcome. So glad that you guys are here uh, at Live Oak Church. Again, the church is not the building. It's not a Sunday morning program. We are the church. And so all of us coming together, where two or more are gathered, there he is. And so I know that the Lord is with us today. And so welcome to Live Oak Church. It's going to be a very interesting day, um, a very interesting couple of weeks. And I just uh, thank you in advance for being the church and being open uh, to uh, what God has in store because he's never going to waste um, a situation. And so we're going to find ways that God is going to use this uh, for, his, uh, for his glory. It's been a crazy two weeks, uh, and this is a unique time where we're forced to uh, shift our rhythms. Uh, we're forced to um, understand of, of what and how to do church. We, we have to re-engineer how this whole church thing is done. And so uh, I think that's a good thing. I think it's going to be good. Um, and, and it's so God that uh, the next part of our uh, journey in Luke is in chapter 6, starting in verse 1, as we talk about Sabbath, as we talk about rest. And so we're not going to do a series on uh, Corona and the church. We're going to continue on um, as if uh, everything is normal. And so we're, going to con we're in uh, the book of Luke, chapter 6. If you have your Bibles, uh, turn to uh, Luke, chapter 6, in verse 1. We are in part 3 of our journey of Luke, uh, and this part, this little section, uh, we're looking at the enemies of Jesus as he began his ministry, as he started going out and doing his work, what you notice is uh, some conflict between the religious establishment and the ways of God. And so the last two weeks we, uh, we, we looked at that and we're going to continue to uh, to examine that here uh, today. So uh, Luke chapter 6, starting with verse 1. On a Sabbath, while he was going through the grain fields, his disciples placed and ate some heads of grain, rubbing them in their hands. But some of the Pharisees said, Why are you doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath? And Jesus answered him, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry? He and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God and took and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat. And also he gave it to, the, uh, to those with him. And he said to them, the son of man is Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and was teaching. And a man was there whose right hand was withered. And the scribes and the Pharisees watched him to see whether he would heal on the Sabbath so that they may find, find reason to accuse him. But he knew their thoughts and he said to the man with the withered hand, come and stand here. And he rose and stood there and Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save life or to destroy it? And after looking around at them, he said to them, said to him, stretch out your hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored. But they were filled with fury and disgust with one another what they might do to Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word. And I pray right now as the church gathers together, we would be and remain faithful to your word, that we would remain faithful to your teaching, and God, I pray that not a single word would come from my lips that is not first anointed by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So a couple things that we want to uh, discuss today, we want to look at here today. Um, uh, the, the first thing is that Sabbath is to increase the relationship, not the religion. Sabbath is to increase the relationship, not the religion. Jesus had a habit of 
relaxing legal observances in the face of human need. He had a habit of, of, of taking that which, which everyone else said this is the way you're supposed to do things and, and kind of relaxing those rules out of, uh, the, out of human need. Why? Because his love, Jesus' love, compelled him to look beyond the ritual. His love for others compelled him to look beyond the ritual. You see, the Pharisees and the church, they focused so much on what was the ritual, what had to be done day after day after day. They, had, they were so stuck to the rules that had been given to them that they forgot that those rules were there to, to uh, connect them to God. And so what Jesus did was he let them know that the, the relationship was much more important than the religion, than the ritual. Hosea chapter six, verse six says, uh, this is uh, coming from the Lord, for I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than your burnt offerings. God is saying, listen, you're, just because you give a sacrifice, just because you do the ritualistic things does not mean that that's what I want. I want your love. I want your commitment. I want your knowledge. I want your relationship. I want your communion. I want you to be with me. That is the foremost um, uh, desire of God. It's not just the idea of doing the right things. And what a perfect example. What, a, what an ideal situation for us to look at right now. Because right now, you are at church in your home. Right now, you are at church. All of the people of Live Oak are in their individual living rooms experiencing church worship service in your living rooms. Why? Because of something that's beyond our control. Why? Because of love. Because I love you and I want you to be okay. I want you to be protected. I don't want you to become sick. And because of that, we're called to be, uh, to, to separate into our rooms. Because it's not about the ritual of us coming together. It's about the relationship that we have with God. What a perfect opportunity for us to recognize that Church has nothing to do with the individual rituals that we do on a weekly basis. It has to do with a love between us and God and a love between us and each other. The second point is understanding what is the Sabbath? What is the Sabbath? You see, Jesus communicated to the, to, to, to the, um, to the Pharisees that he is above the Sabbath. He is God. And he, the Son of Man, overrules your rituals. In verse 5, he said to them, the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Our connection with God, our connection with the Lord, our connection with Jesus is supersedes that of the rituals. And so let's look at the Sabbath. Let's look at, you know, because this was a big deal. So where, where did the Pharisees come from? Where, what, 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 where, where, did this, uh, where did this begin? Well, it began in Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all your work. But on the seventh day, as is the Sabbath to but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord God. In it, you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your manservant or your maidservant or your cattle or the sojourner who is with you at the gates. For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them and rested on the seventh. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So, we're going to unpack this a little bit about what makes the Sabbath important. Because I do believe, don't hear me say, that Jesus negated the need for the Sabbath. 
What Jesus did was say to take out the ritual aspect of the Sabbath and to make it about him. Because I believe that Sabbath is crucial. I believe that God ordained it. I believe that he created it for us because I believe that it is a good thing. And so I think there are four observations out of this passage that I want to look at when it comes to the Sabbath. Number one, remembering. We need to remember the Sabbath. First, Israel is to remember the rest day. Sabbath means rest. Remember the Sabbath day. It means don't forget to take a day off. Now, I am telling you right now, I am the absolute worst at this. I, um, you know, up until just two weeks ago, I worked at the coffee shop Monday through Saturday, and then we had church on Sunday morning. I was up here at the church 630 uh, every, more, every morning of the week. There was no day where I was unplugging. There was no day that I was uh, stepping aside and simply being with the Lord. It was always doing, doing, doing. And, and I realized that this was unhealthy. I realized it was unbiblical. And I realized that it was not help, uh, it was not right of me as your pastor to um, to uh, to model this kind of lifestyle. Uh, and so we have to remember to take a day off. We need to make it a priority. We need to to schedule it. For some of us, it doesn't happen unless we put it in our phones. It doesn't happen unless we put it in our computer uh, in our calendars. And so we need to remember it. Secondly, we need to keep it holy. Keeping it holy means setting aside from all other days as a special day. Specifically, as verse 10 says, keep it holy to the Lord or for the Lord. In other words, the rest is not to be aimless rest. This is not to be a day where you uh, Netflix and, and binge watch your favorite TV shows, but God-centered rest. Attention is to be directed to God in a way that is more concentrated and steady than on ordinary days. Where is it where you're able to focus on the Lord? You know, for me, I love just going to the beach and sitting there and hearing the waves crash. I love reading the scriptures, meditating on the scriptures, listening to praise worship as the, as the waves come crashing in. I love that. Uh, that, that, that connection to God in those moments. I love taking a walk in the woods. I love the, those connections. See, that's what it's talking about. It's not chilling or relaxing. It's about a connection to God that you don't get on a normal day. So make it holy. Holy means set apart. The word holy Bible, the, the word Bible simply means book. Holy Bible is what makes the book set apart from all other books. And so as we look at the Sabbath day, it is the holy day. It is the one day set apart for the Lord. And the third thing we're going to look at is uh, one out of every seven. The holy rest day should be one out of every seven. Verse nine says, six days you shall labor and do all your work. But on the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. Work six, rest one. Work six, rest one. That's the pattern prescribed in the Ten Commandments. Note, it does not say that the Sabbath, that the rest day, has to be one of the uh, has to be the last day of the week or the first day of the week. The concept of the weeks is not even mentioned. The command is simply to work six, rest one. Every seventh day should be a sabbatical. Listen, that's the great thing about God. You see, He. You know, he lines all these things up. It's not just spiritual, it's emotional, it's physical. Our health is contingent upon us having certain rhythms in our life. And part of the rhythm that we're supposed to work from, uh, to, 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 to live from, is an idea of work six, rest one. Work six, rest one. And so uh, it, it's very important if it is able, if you're able to do it, to make sure that you have this set aside uh, for you to do. Don't try to make it up. I'm going to work four weeks in a row and then take a week off, you know, um, uh, and, and try to catch up all that. There, there really is a rhythm. There is a way that God created this to be. And then uh, fourth, verse 11 leads us to the basic point of the commandment. It's based on God's rest after creation. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, 
the sea and all that is in them and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath and hallowed it. Work hard and well and be an example. Be an example. And th this is taken from Genesis chapter two, verses two and three. And on the seventh day, God finished his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because on it, God rested from all his work, which he had done in creation. And so my thing is, as Christians, we should be the hardest laborers, the hardest workers on six days. And on that seventh day, we rest. Work, work hard, do as much as you can, work as much as you can on those six days. But on that seventh day, we need to develop a spirit of rest. And so what I want to do, what I want to look at is um, in, in Luke chapter 6, um, Jesus uh, 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 said, um, but he knew their thoughts and he said to the man, uh, and well, Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm? So I thought for just a minute, as we close things out, let's look at how does the Sabbath do good and how does the Sabbath do harm? Okay, so first off, how does the Sabbath do good? One, it allows us to work from our rest. Uh, there's a friend of mine, David Enzer at Point North Church. He, uh, he you know, gave, uh, gave me this, um, this thought years ago. And I always thought it was kind of just semantics. Do you rest from your work or do you work from your rest? And I, I, I think that God set it up that we are to work from our rest. Often, you know, you know we, we, we recharge and then we're ready to work. Too often we work so hard, we just pass out. And that's not the way it's supposed to be. Rest, recharge, and then work. So I think the Sabbath does good because it allows us to work from our rest. Secondly, it keeps our priorities in order. If we're able to give God that one day and focus on him and have that Sabbath where we're able to focus on him and to love him and to worship him, it keeps our priorities in order for the rest of the day. And then thirdly, it's healthy. It just is. It, it, it's healthy, not only spiritually, <coughs> not only spiritually, but emotionally and physically as well. Stopping our weekly week routine, uh, work routine helps us recover and relieves us from the mental stress of living in a relentlessly busy world. Resting from our regular labor does not mean that we should completely be inactive. On the contrary, a pleasant hike in the nature can be restorative. However, studies show that people who keep the Sabbath experience dramatic decreases in the rates of coronary artery disease um, and other stress-related illnesses. Uh, and, and according to the research done by National Geographic, regular keepers... Um, outlive their American counterparts by up to 10 years. So among the clear reasons for keeping the Sabbath is just because it's healthy, because that's what God lined up. If we just obey the Lord, we'll realize that he's given us everything we need for a healthy, balanced life. So that's how the Sabbath does good. Or how can the Sabbath do harm? What is, what is the harm in the Sabbath? And the first thing is when it becomes about the ritual and not the relationship. When it becomes about the ritual and not the relationship, when you are so focused on the ritual of the Sabbath and you forget the point is to connect yourself to Jesus. Secondly, when it keeps you from doing good. When it keeps you from doing good. And when, when that's how Jesus brought it up to the Pharisees. He says, listen, is it good or bad that I help this young man? And so we can be, um, we can be, strident about our attitudes of the Sabbath and keeping us from helping other people. Well, I'm not allowed to work that day. I'm not allowed to do something on that day. And it keeps us from being focused on other people. So when it keeps you from doing good, that is when it can be a harm. And then thirdly, when it places the focus on you, when it places the focus on you, we keep the Sabbath to focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. So don't brag about keeping the Sabbath. Don't brag about how much holier you are because you choose not to eat out on the Sabbath because you don't want anyone else to work either. 
Um, don't brag about how much you keep the Sabbath, you know, uh, when other people may not be able to, when they may not have that flexibility yet in their lives. So when it becomes about you, that is when the Sabbath can do harm. And to that end, I just want to tell you, to, you know, just to, to, to say that some of you have a job that you can't, you know, that, that maybe you have to work seven days a week and that's just your life right now. And I would just encourage you and, and, and implore you that you strive to get to the place that you work, that you continue to work towards the place where you're able to take a Sabbath every week. So how can we take advantage of where we are right now? It's interesting that many of us have been in a situation where we can't, um, we don't have time to take a Sabbath. The idea of taking time off, the idea of taking a day is ridiculous. Well, now God has shut down the entire country. And so you now have more time than you ever have before. And so what do we do with that? How, how can we take advantage of this Corona mess? Well, two things. One, we can develop some new normals in our life. Maybe instead of turning on the TV, we open the Bible. Maybe instead of um, talking about sports or the news, we talk about what God's doing in our life. Develop some new normals in your life. And two, eliminate the excuses. We are, we are in a great place right now where we can eliminate all the excuses and simply focus on what God has in store for us. So before I pray, um, I just want to encourage us all to remember the Sabbath, to remember that God put these things in place for us, that God encourages us to, uh, to work very hard. We should be the hardest workers. We should be known, Christians should be known for our hard work. But then when we rest, our rest is so focused on an intimate connection with God. And so today on this day, uh, as, you, uh, as we turn off our TVs or computers and say, you know, uh, be done uh, with this worship experience, spend some time today. Take a walk with your family. Um, spend some time to connect with God. Let this, be, let, let this day be a day connected to Jesus where you worship and hear from him uh, in, in a powerful way. I think it's going to make you much uh, much healthier. Um, let us pray. Lord, I don't understand what's going on in the world. I don't understand what happened. I don't, I don't understand what's happening with this virus. I don't know if it's exaggerated. I don't know if it's real. I don't know, Lord, what's going on. All I know is that we are to follow you. All I know, God, is that you are still on your throne and that we are still the church. God, I pray that we would all develop in our lives a, um, a habit of the Sabbath, but that that Sabbath would not be a ritual, but simply a closer relationship with you. God, I pray for those who are losing their jobs. I pray for those who have um, financial needs. We pray that you would be the provider. I pray for those who are getting ill, for those who are uh, uh, getting this virus. God, we pray that you would be the, the great healer, God. I pray, God, you would open our eyes and give us opportunities to see ways for us to be the church in the community. Lord, we love you. We thank you for all these good things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we go, I just want to remind you of a couple of things. Uh, obviously, at this time in church, we would be passing uh, a basket. Marty would be plucking the guitar, and the offering basket would be uh, going by, um, uh, and for you to be able to give uh, your tithes and offerings. Obviously, we can't do that right now. There is no basket going in front of you at this moment. Uh, so I encourage you, if you can, um, sign up to give online, or you can even Venmo, um, uh, download the app on your phone, Venmo app, and you can give uh, that way as well. Um, or if you're uncomfortable doing any finances on, 
uh, phone or, or online at all, you can um, mail your tithe checks to uh, Live Oak Church, P.O. Box 122, Johns Island, South Carolina, 29457, 29457. So uh, I just thank you for being committed uh, to, um, uh, to, to the um, giving uh, to the ministry and to the Lord so that we can have the funds to uh, help those who are in need as those uh, situations arise. So uh, thank you so much. Um, also, uh, we are having live groups this week. Uh, we are not going to meet together. Uh, we're still wanting to flatten that curve, and so we're not we're not leaving our homes. We're going to stay in our homes, um, but we're using an app called Zoom. And uh, if you did not get our e newsletter, please sign up for that on our website. Um, but we uh, let us know, um, comment below, um, and let me know. Hey, I didn't get that. Um, uh, we Carrie Aerosmith put together a little. Um, tutorial sheet for you. So download the Zoom app on your phones or on your computer and uh, we can all meet together uh, at our normal life group times uh, and we'll just do it digitally that way. It's going to be a lot of fun. I think it's going to be really kind of cool actually. So uh, anyway, uh, a lot's going on. Please stay committed. Please, you know, please uh, stay connected uh, as we, you know, continue to uh, do this. I'll be doing Monday through Friday uh, morning devotions on Facebook Live as well. So I uh, love you guys, and we're going to get through this together. As a matter of fact, I believe that on the other side, we're going to be stronger than we were uh, even now. So uh, have a great week, and go and send no more.